Hello there, this is Rahul and today we are going to talk about one interesting topic that is Terraform Null Resource. Lately, I have been reading about the Terraform Null Resource on the official website of a Terraform, but I felt those information was not sufficient enough so that I can use the Terraform Null Resource for provisioning of my infrastructure. So in today's session, we are going to take a look what the Terraform Null Resource is and how you can use the Terraform Null Resource for provisioning your infrastructure. Before we actually take a concrete example of a null resource, let's try to understand what null resource says. So the first thing null resource says is don't do anything. So what does it mean? So don't do anything that means you don't have to provision or start any resource on cloud environment. So whether you are working on an AWS, whether you are working on a Google Cloud or whether you are working on an Azure. So if you are using a null resource, then that null resource will not set up any resource onto your cloud environment. Here I'm just taking in very simple example and this is not an example of a null resource. So if you I zoom in over here, then if you'll see this is code. So this code is used to set up an EC2 machine or a virtual machine on a AWS. And this machine is t2.micro. So as soon as you execute this Terraform code and as, as soon as you execute Terraform apply on this particular line of code, then what it will do, it will just set up an EC2 machine on a AWS environment. So if you can see over here, this is the end result of applying this code. So you will get an EC2 machine set up onto your AWS cloud. Okay, so now let's check the code of a null resource. So this is the code of a null resource if I can zoom in over here. So this is the structure for defining a null resource inside your Terraform file. So first of all, you need to define the resource and the resource name should be null resource and then the name of the null resource. This particular null resource can be anything. You can keep any name of your choice. So it doesn't matter. So I'm referring to this name. So just put a suitable name for your null resource. And after that, you you need to define two parameters one is optional but another one is mandatory so here the trigger thing is optional over here so your null resource can be with trigger or can be without trigger third thing you need to define uh, provisioners so here i'm using the local provisioner but in case if you need you can use the remote provisioner also you can use the data source or data block of terraform also so this is the structure or the code for defining the null resource all right so now we have defined the null resource what then what will happen when we execute the terraform apply command so i'm just referring to the this command terraform apply so as soon as you execute the terraform apply command on a null resource then nothing will happen or no resource will be provisioned or started on your cloud environment so here in this example, I'm taking AWS, but if you are working on a Google Cloud or Azure, and if you are using a null resource and you apply a Terraform or you execute a Terraform apply command, then no resource will be provisioned onto that particular cloud environment. So this is the first important thing about the null resource. Now you can compare both the example over here and you can see the end result of both the uh, example that is EC2 instance and the null resource and it will ease out to understand the significance of your, the null resource in Terraform. So here is I'm taking one example which will help you to understand null resource in more detail. So here I'm just taking the same example code over here and if you'll see carefully then here I have defined the null resource and that is over here and here I have written a command and that command is a shell command and it is simply printing the hello world. The shell command I have taken over here is pretty simple so that we can understand the concept. So here this, you can see the output over here. This is not output but this is the command over here and which I am trying to execute using the local provisioner available into our Terraform. So here uh, I have defined the trigger. And this trigger will execute as soon as we provision the EC2 instance. I'll show you the complete example into the demo section later. But just to understand this concepts over here, that whenever you define a null resource, then you need to define some kind of a provisioner or a data source or a remote provisioner uh, with your null resource. So here I'm using the uh, local provisioner. And in the local provisioner, I have written a shell command, which will be executed as a part of a null resource. So as soon as I apply or I run the Terraform apply command, then this particular command will get executed and I'll see the output hello world into 
my terminal. All right, so now we know the syntax of a null resource and the significance of a null resource in Terraform. But what are the application or the use case of a null resource? So here I have just written down some of the use cases, but these use cases depends upon your need and your project setup. So here, let's take one example. So I have already shown the one example where you can execute uh, the shell command using the local provisioner inside your null resource. So that is the first use case. Also, you can uh, execute the scripts. So this is just an one uh, shell command which I have written for printing the hello world. But instead of that, you can just execute a shell script as a part of your null resource. So if you are having a big Terraform project where you need to execute certain shell script which is big in size, so you can just supply those shell script uh, into your local provisioner along with your null resource and you should be able to execute that particular shell script. The third use case which I have seen uh, for null resource is executing the Ansible playbook. Uh, this is just an example. This is not an ideal scenario I am talking about. But if you are using a null resource and if there is a need, then you can just uh, run the Ansible playbook also along with your null resource. The fourth use case is a little bit specific to programming setup and uh, how you have set up your development environment. So uh, the machine on which you are executing uh, Terraform and if there is a provision, uh, not provision, if you have set up a Python or if you have installed Python onto the same machine, then you can execute the Python program also using the null resource. And that goes along with uh, Java also, Node.js also. So these are just an example. So with the help of null resource, you can run a Python program, you can run a Java code, you can run even a Node.js code also. So that depends like uh, what kind of a uh, uh, programming language you have installed onto your local system. And uh, with the help of null resource, you can just run those program also. So these are the most uh, significant use cases which I have found, uh, which goes along with the null resources. Before we jump into the demo of a null resource, there is one important concept in null resource that is trigger. So here, if you see carefully this particular code, then here I have defined one trigger over here. So trigger, as the name suggests, it will just trigger the whatever provisioner you have written over here. So here I have written the local exec provisioner, which is executing the shell command. So as soon as this trigger comes into picture of a null resource, it will just execute the local provisioner. But there are certain conditions on which this trigger will happen. So if you look carefully over here, then there is an ID and uh, there are some value assigned to this particular ID. So whenever uh, there is a change in this value, if there is a new value coming into this particular ID, then this trigger will execute. And if there is a no change in value of this particular ID, then trigger will not execute. And this, your local provisioner, uh, which is overwritten over here, will not get executed. So here I have, uh, I have tried to explain over here also, if the value is changed and if ID gets a new value, then you will see it will execute this particular local exec provisioner. So this is an important concept when it comes to null resource because many of the time we use triggers along with our null resource. Before we head over to the demo, uh, I'll just try to share this link of this blog post which I have prepared for the null resource and I'll put this uh, link into the description section of this video so you can just follow along this blog post. So here I have documented all the code which I'm just going to use into the demo session. So uh, just follow this guide uh, if you feel like you need to have the similar code onto your Terraform project. Let's start with the demo and here I have taken one of the simplest example which I can take for explaining the null resource. So start from the bot uh, top. Here I have defined the provider because I am working on AWS and this example is for AWS. But uh, these concepts are pretty much same and uh, these initial two blocks will change in case if you are using the Google Cloud or Azure. Because if you are using Google Cloud, then you need to change the provider over here. Similarly, that goes for Azure also. So here, this is an uh, AWS provider because I'm on AWS. Here, I'm sharing the credential. This is a credential file which I'm using. And uh, this is the resource. So this is an actual resource, virtual machine that is an EC2 instance, which I'll try to set up using this Terraform code. And at the bottom, the third resource which I'm talking about is the null resource. So here I have defined a null resource. And for initially, I have disabled the trigger. 
I just I'll just enable it later but uh, I have just disabled the trigger so that I can show that you can write the null resource even without the triggers also and here is the provisioner which I have written over here so in this provisioner I'm just executing the command that is hello world command so this is the code and here I'll try to set up an EC2 machine first and after that we'll just try to execute the null resource and we'll see whether it executes or not let's open the terminal over here and the first command which I'm just going to write is the terraform init command. And if it's completed successfully, then I'm just going to clear the screen. The next command which I'm just going to write is terraform plan command. And here you can see it is showing it is going to add two resources. So one resource is the null resource and the first resource is EC2 instance and if you go over here then you will find the EC2 instance. So there are two resources will be added EC2 and null resource. Okay I'm just gonna clear the screen over here the final command which I'm just gonna run is terraform apply and here I'm just gonna type yes and here you can see the command uh, terminal output over here then you can see it's creating the EC2 resource this is the ID of our EC2 instance, which is printed over here. And this is the output of our provisioner or the null resource. So here it is saying hello world. That means it is it has executed our null provisioner and inside the local EXCC provisioner, it has executed that particular shell command and it has printed the output as a hello world. And here you can see our terraform apply command has just finished. Now here is one important concept for null resource. So as you can see, this is the first time we have executed our Terraform code where it has executed our null resource for the first time. So by default, null resource will execute for the first time, but whenever you try to execute the same null resource uh, second time, then it will not execute. So here, uh, this is the output of our first Terraform apply. I'm just gonna run second terraform apply and we will see whether it has executed or not ideally it should not execute the local exec provisioner and we should not see the output hello world onto our terminal so i'm just gonna create some space and i'm just gonna write one more command terraform apply and simply hit enter and here you can see since our EC2 instance has already been provisioned or already been started so it, Terraform didn't start at second EC2 instance because it's the same instance which is running over there. And here you can see the complete output and you will not see uh, the output that is hello world the shell command which I, we have seen in the first time. So here this output is missing over here which means whenever you are working with the null resource and if you have written a null resource without trigger then it is going to execute only once and the, if you try to execute it second time that particular null resource will not execute and you will not see any kind of output let's destroy everything and next time we are just gonna enable the trigger and then we are gonna execute the same terraform apply command and then we will see the output here I have enabled the trigger already. Okay, so open the terminal over here and I'm just gonna clear the screen and I'm just gonna run the terraform plan command because I have already executed the terraform in it. So you don't need to do it again. So here I have executed the terraform plan command and it is going to add the two resource that is EC2 and null. Then I'm just gonna clear the screen and then I'm just gonna run the terraform apply command and type yes. Okay, so here you can see uh, it has completed and we have got the new ID of our EC2 instance and after creating the EC2 instance we have uh, the null resource has been executed and this is the output of our null resource. So uh, if you put the trigger inside your null resource then null resource is going to execute only once because it will get a new ID into the trigger and if we don't get a new ID inside the trigger then our null resource or the local EXCC provisioner will not execute. So this is the, uh, the tricky thing over with the null resource. So you have to be really careful uh, when you are looking at the trigger and if there is certain value change which is happening inside the trigger then it is going to execute the local EXCC provisioner and in this case we have got that trigger value in the form of our EC2 ID. And here you can see this is the ID and this is the output which we have got after the uh, executing the terraform apply command. 
Now, since we have enabled the trigger inside our null resource and we have executed our uh, Terraform apply command on this particular trigger once. So now what will happen when we execute the Terraform apply command second time? Since uh, the ID is going to be the same because uh, we are just simply executing the Terraform apply command on already running EC2 instance. So that EC2 instance is already running. It has already got an ID which is unique and second time when we run that ID is not going to change. It is still going to be the same. Since the ID value is still same, so this trigger will not execute and this local provisioner will not execute that particular command. So I'm just going to create some space over here and I'm just going to run the terraform apply command once again. And here you can see uh, it has executed the second time but here you can see there is no output of hello world over here. So which uh, tells again that uh, the ID change is necessary inside your trigger and as soon as you get a new ID then you will uh, execute your local or remote provisioner which you have written inside your null resource. If the ID has not changed or the value has not changed into the trigger then it will not execute any of the uh, local EXCC or remote provisioner. Alright, so now you have got an idea how the null resource work and how the trigger can be useful for your null resource. Now I'll take one more example. I'm not going to destroy anything. I'm just going to keep the same state. We have a EC2 instance running and we already got an ID of that particular EC2 instance and I'm not destroying anything. So the only thing which I'm going to change over here is this ID. So instead of ID, I'm just going to change it to the timestamp. So here I have already commented, I'm just going to enable it and I'm just going to put a timestamp over here. So why I'm putting it over here is because I just wanted to change the value of an ID. If I'll put this particular ID, the EC2 instance ID, then it is going to be the same and I will not see a change uh, in the null resource uh, trigger ID and it will not execute it. But since I have put a timestamp over here, so timestamp will just return a new timestamp value. Since I have run the same code a couple of minutes ago and now I'm trying to execute it again, so timestamp will change. And as soon as timestamp will change, then I will see the same local EXCC provisioner executing again inside the null resource. So as soon as I put this value inside the ID, so every time I execute my Terraform apply command, this null resource will work. So this is the key thing over here into the trigger. So as I mentioned, if something changes inside the trigger and if some new value comes in inside the trigger, then it will execute that particular provisioner inside this particular null resource. So here, um, I have not destroyed anything. EC2 instance is still running. I'm just simply going to run terraform apply command. And I'm just going to type PS. And here you can see it has executed that particular local EXEC provisioner. And the reason being, we have got a new ID. And it doesn't matter over here. It is just a key value pair. So you can assign a string, you can assign an integer. And here you can see I have assigned the timestamp over here. So as soon as the things changes inside this trigger, it is going to execute this particular provisioner. Now I have destroyed all the resources and I have just executed the terraform destroy command. So I hope you liked the today's session on terraform null resource and hope this session will help you to understand the concept of a null resource. And in this example which I have shown, I have just taken a local EXCC provisioner but you are not limited to local EXCC provisioner, you can use the remote EXCC provisioner also. And uh, I have shown a very basic example that is eco hello world but you can execute uh, complex commands also so that you will find onto my blog post where I have shown a different different example where I have executed the shell script and multiple command into the local EXCC provisioner. I hope you liked the today's session and if you are interested into the similar content on a DevOps then keep following to this channel where I keep on sharing this content uh, on a weekly basis. There has been a long gap in the last month but I hope I will continue sharing this kind of a session in future also. So till then take care and bye bye.